We are here uh, with Amanda and Riley and Tom to talk Westworld. Riley, you've uh, you've um, you've got a hat. I, I love it. Where's yours? I'll, I'll, I'll get mine on. I'll get mine on. Okay. We got. Oh. Okay. Oh there, there we go. go. There yeah. we go. Amanda and Tom, you didn't get the hat memo. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Um, okay. I could get one. It just wouldn't be of whatever Riley. It doesn't. Does it fit your head? Like. <laughs> it's, it's from when I was little, yeah. We are here. Like we are here to talk the second episode of Westworld to recap that. And at Gold Derby, we love talking about awards and Emmys and Oscars and Golden Globes and all those things. And last week, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, uh, okay, with the rest, Westworld's <laughs> Emmy chances. We spent a lot of time talking about Westworld's Emmy chances. And someone sent me an email this week, notifying me there's actually awards coming up before the Emmys for next year. There's actually the Golden Globes are in a month or two. So I thought today it might be good to unpack some of the Golden Globe chances of the show to actually talk about uh, whether we think uh, rather than talking about an award show that is about 10 months away, talking about one that is um, about what, a couple months away. So um, firstly, I guess uh, let's start with uh, let's start with Tom because uh, you didn't chat us last week. Firstly, what are your first impressions on Westworld? And secondly, who do you think um, like who do you think's their best chance at winning a Golden Globe? Well, I'll get to the episode in a second. Let's okay. let's deal with the award stuff first. Um, because the Golden Globes are slaves to celebrity, I would suspect that Anthony Hopkins and Ed Harris are probably at the top of their list. But there's so many good actors in this uh, this series. Uh, it depends on who goes where. They could, they could possibly argue that Harris may go supporting based on two, two episodes. Uh, I can't really tell how that character is going to turn out. Um, as far as the women go, certainly Tandy Newton has enough, uh, you know, certainly in episode two, she's got enough scenes to qualify. Uh, whether she's a big enough name to make it into the globe, you know, circle of celebrity -ness, we'll see. Uh, but I think this may be a, a fairly big contender. I can see a, a, a show like Westworld really hitting with foreign journalists because it seems exotic to them, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Uh, and, but certainly the production values are, are quite amazing. And uh, so I think it has pretty decent Golden Globe chances, but I'm not quite sure who's going to fit where. And I think we might, uh, it might uh, be a little clearer in a few weeks once the story wears out. Mm. Riley, what do you think? Which 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 categories do you reckon the Globes um, um, might it might have the best shot at? Yeah, it hasn't always been this way, but at least in the last few years, the Globes are really latching on to whatever is new just because it's new. And Westworld is new, so I think that it'll do just fine at the Globes. I think it'll get uh, actor for... Um, for Anthony Hopkins and series and Evan Rachel Wood, I guess. And Ed Harris has been nominated six times and won two Globes. So he's uh, someone that they like and someone who I would expect them to continue liking. Amanda? Yeah, I, I think as far as Globes are concerned, since most of them are pretty well-known actors in this, I, I think Anthony Hopkins will get in. I think the series will get in. I, right now they have Ed Harrison supporting, so that category is always the hardest to predict, <laughs> those two supporting categories, but he's a big enough name. And then I think Andy Newton's pretty well known enough that he might be able to get into supporting actress. Mm. I really, yeah, like looking at the Gold Derby odds in those lead acting races, you, I think at the moment, and yeah, this is, you can go on a Gold Derby right now and predict uh, these these awards, predict the uh, TV uh, Globe races. Um, we've got, I think, Evan Rachel Wood in second on seven to two odds um, behind Winona Ryder from Stranger Things. And we've got Anthony Hopkins in second as well behind um behind uh the, the emmy winner and last year's Glo uh the, the emmy winner rami malik um and anthony hopkins is on um night night nine to two odds in second place there so they're both sitting in second place they're both big names i think of those two races i would uh, give the edge like if only one of them could win which is not necessarily the case um i'd say maybe anthony hopkins just as the edge because uh winona Ryder is a newer 
Uh, she's also in a hot new show in Stranger Things. So I, I could see the Globes going either way there. But I agree with you guys. The Globes love new shows. They love giving it to new things. I think Westworld and Stranger Things are probably the two shows in the box seat um, heading into the Golden Globes this year in a, in a number of categories. Well, and we don't know yet. Yeah, but that's what I was about to say is that Claire Foy, look out for that because if it's as good as the previews look, it's going to air, it's going to drop right at the perfect time. So we could absolutely see something like Claire Foy all of a sudden become uh, kind of the, the spoiler between uh, in that category, at least. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think the supporting races too, it's always so tough because um, it's um, as, as uh, one of you guys said, it's, they mix the comedy and the drama and the miniseries all together. So it's just like, it's a real crapshoot in trying to predict them. So I could easily see Ed, uh, particularly Ed Harris, but also uh, Tandy Newton uh, winning. But you could also see them maybe only just getting nominated. Like, you know, it could really, there's so many directions. That's like such a hard category to predict. I wouldn't want to put any money on anyone winning that race, really. But I think uh, Ed Harris no. will be in the mix for that. We didn't even have, wasn't Tobias Menzies not even in the Prediction Center last year, so. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's one of the crazy, those are the two craziest categories. If you win that, it's like winning two Emmys, because <laughs> you got to take down everybody in television practically to win. Yeah. So true. Look, look, at, look at the odds, like Edna Harris is on like 28 to 1 or something, like pretty low in that guy. I, I think that's like a, I, maybe I would put money on that with, with odds that, um, that good because I think he's de uh, I, I think he's got a good chance of getting nominated oh wow yeah he's really low what is that like 20th yeah. or something yeah it's like it's like yeah I just scroll down I'm like oh no we've left Ed Harris <laughs> out of the prediction center but no he's <laughs> there he's just not very high so but I that's... think Ed Harris is gonna need a, an episode and so far in the first two he's come in you know had a little bit of dialogue and shot somebody and moved on so I, I think we need an Ed Harris episode for him to really have the heft to be able to win this. He could get nominated on his name, but uh, it, and, and it's probably likely that he will. But in order to win, I hope that we have an Ed, because I'm really looking forward to seeing him tear it up. And he's like, like uh, Lady Gaga had last year, Tom. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if he need like, it's just so hard to predict with those globes, like, where, yeah. which uh, which way they're going to go and stuff, and he's new, and they love him, and stuff like that, it, who knows, but I do think, um, particularly Ed, Ed Harris is going to become a serious contender come any time, and stuff like that, he's going to need um, an award, uh, like, he's going to need an episode, and he's going to need a bit more of a prominent feature. Okay, um, let's... Um, Let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, second episode of the show. Let's talk chestnut. But first, like, because uh, Tom and Riley, you haven't joined us. One of our Westworld recaps yet. So it'd be good to get just your general thoughts on the show. Are you enjoying it? Are you not enjoying it? Things like that. We'll start with Tom, then go to Riley. Uh, I've gotten into fights with people on the forum. I really enjoyed the first episode. I know that you know some people thought it was overblown, and but I was just really impressed with it as a mini movie. What I was what I was most afraid of in episode two is that it would suffer from sophomore slump. And uh, because for writers, episode two of a series is like, okay, we've got picked up. We're going to be a series. Now what? And uh, the now what is the scariest thing that a writer can hear. With episode two of Westworld, now we've got the series. And that is something that I think I'm very comforted uh, with what episode two did. My other biggest fear was that once we begin having episodes centering around guests coming in, it was going to become Fantasy Island. And I, I, this show is too good to become that. Uh, and uh, with ringing with the story of the two guys coming in, we got, it, it served a different purpose other than just, uh, uh, they're just regular guests. We got to see the orientation process. We got to see them pick out their clothes. We got to see the hosts try and tempt them. And then to get to the town itself. In episode one, 
the guests were already there dressed up in cowboy outfits. But the whole, I'm fascinated by the process of all of this. And it's obvious that the uh, creators have thought this out very, very well. And it's very telling uh, what guests choose in terms of uh, their approach to the uh, the, the game, and, uh, the, 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 the park, and uh, what uh, outfits they choose to create a persona. Uh, so in that sense, I thought episode two is very, very interesting uh, and very hopeful in terms of what it could work like as a series. Hmm. Riley? I would say the show hasn't won me over yet. And at this point, it's making me a little angry how uh, much praise <laughs> it's getting for the two episodes that it's aired so far. I find that the uh, the robots are robots, so they're inherently not that interesting. And then the people programming the robots uh, are not involved in the storylines involving guns and sex, so their uh, characters are not as interesting either. Um, I find that there's a whole lot going on in these first two episodes uh, where HBO, you know, they want their next Game of Thrones, and that's been talked about endlessly in the media. So they. It, it seems to me like they're putting all the elements of Game of Thrones into the show, even if it might not be the appropriate time for those things. Like, a scene that bothered me in the first episode was when Rodrigo Santoro showed up, and then there's that big uh, firefight. But I don't know who Rodrigo Santoro's character is. I don't know why I should care about him. It's just a whole bunch of, you know, violence for not really any reason. And I find that kind of... Uh, uh, an example of how the show's maybe juggling too many things without uh, introducing things as they get a handle on what they've already established. No, no sex or violence, Riley, in the um, in the outside of Westworld world. Uh, you've got Jeffrey Wright having an affair with the uh, or sleep. No, maybe not a affair. Yes. Maybe sleeping <laughs> with the uh, sleeping with one of the, um, the the other people that work in the office. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Amanda, what did you think of episode two? I know when we had our last recap, you had already seen the episode. You were very excited about certain elements of it. What pops for you the most? Well, I I don't really have the same problem Riley does as far as the shootout because this is the make-believe fantasy park where, you know, this is all for the guest entertainment. So that did, I don't really need to know the motivation behind why the robots got to kill everybody in town. Um, but as far as next episode, I actually really appreciated seeing it from like a spectator's point of view as they're coming into this as a way of kind of stepping back and entering the world in a new way and seeing how they become characters. And I don't think it's going to become kind of like Fantasy Island. I think that's more just kind of a one-off. These people are in the previews for next week, so I, so I, I think they're going to have more to do. But Fanny Newton was so good in this episode yeah she was so good this would be her episode to win that i think if she were to be nominated that she should submit and it's interesting how very little evan rachel wood did so it's kind of neat to see it shift focus and anthony hopkins is up to something and ed harris is up to something so for now i'm in <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about Than Yu because I get, think she's the big sort of like the, the focus of this episode. She's the one who's uh, fa fantastic and knocks it out of the park, has a lot of stuff to do. Now, this is obviously her best performance in Westworld um, of the two episodes <laughs> she's been in. It is probably one of anyone's best performance in Westworld because, um, you know, Evan Rachel Wood was very good in the pilot, but there was no one else who had a real big showcase. So uh, uh, in this performance, uh, Danny has got to the her best performance and probably the second or first best performance of anyone in the show so far, but we're not comparing it to much. How do you think this stands as a performance against other shows and other things we've seen over the past couple of years? Is this is this like a real uh, one of the great sort of performances we've seen in the last year or two, or is it just a good performance for Westworld? Um, Tom, it's it's hard to say. If Westworld becomes an Emmy favorite, this will be her. I totally agree with Amanda. This will be her tape. Uh, and I think it could stand up to any Emmy contender across the board. I mean, she would be very competitive with this. If Westworld is looked at as kind of a lark, 
uh, it might be difficult for her to get nominated. And though, might, though she might submit this uh, episode, uh, I don't know. I don't know how the actors are going to get traction if the show is not taken seriously. So far, I, I would say it's the kind of show that will be taken seriously by the Emmys. But uh, right now we're in episode two, so we'll see. Mm. Um, Riley, what do you think? I think what helps uh, Tandy Newton and H.S. Island is that the critics got the first four episodes, so her showcase is one that's been talked about a lot online already in advance reviews. So if somebody gets a good arc later in the season, maybe not as many people will be aware of it. And she is a BAFTA nominee, so she has some name recognition. You guys talked last week about how she doesn't have the internal competition, so I think that'll be very helpful to her. Yeah. And, and not even just internal competition. We only have two people left in supporting actress. And as much as I love Constance Zimmer, and I've said he was going to win based off episode in one of our chats, but and as much as I, I appreciate and respect Maura Tierney's work, we don't know if they're 100% coming back just because they're the lone two. So if that category is completely blown open this year, then I absolutely think someone as recognizable as her can't get into this. Whether the show is on there really does well or not, I still think she could probably get in. As long as, I mean, and if Evan Rachel Wood stays and leaves, then she'll be in a really good position if they love the show, because she might be the only one without any competition. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I think this is a strong performance, especially in a supporting race. This would be a very competitive um, tape. So I think this is, um, I think, I think she's in a great spot here. Um, uh, like, it is a performance that poses a lot of questions. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on there. It's the kind of thing if an Emmy voter was watching and they're not a big fan of Westworld, they could be a bit confused by or something like that. So, um, but aside from like sort of the Emmy concerns. What do we think about her storyline and what that means for the show sort of moving forward? So there's all this talk about um, her not not, not um, sort of being a bit out of date, a model, like they're wanting to get rid of her. And then there's talks about her dreaming, but she doesn't really, um, but she, then she, they said she can't dream, then she does dream. And then she wakes up in the middle of an operation and um, Storm like just starts running around. Um, what, like, what was the most interesting element of her performance and of her storyline, um, Tom? I think the storyline, on the storyline uh, front, I would say she is the first host to have actually seen what happens to the discarded hosts. Mm. And uh, no one else in Westworld has that knowledge yet, but, but she does. And how this affects her is going to be fascinating. I hope they develop that uh, that very well. But that was the one element that's like, okay, let's see where this is going to go. Hmm. Uh, Riley? Yeah, a lot more than the mythological, uh, mysteries about the mythology. Um, I have questions about the logistics of the show. Uh, so I wonder with her, like, does her memory get wiped every day from just the past day's events. So maybe this is something that could slip by and she'd be able to remember later. Yeah. Yeah. Miranda? Well, I think it's interesting that Evan Rachel Wood said that saying and it kind of woke her up and man, she was good in that operating room when she grabbed that knife. <laughs> I've died many times. How about you? Yeah. I mean, that should have been a, I don't know what those guys were doing to her. I can't really remember, but that should have been a clue. Something is not right with her programming, but <laughs> we did get a lot of different looks for her playing a robot. She had that flashback where we saw all that horror and maybe a pot, a past um, character she was playing. So should we get a, we get a decent amount of looks at what she can do. Mm. Yeah, it definitely flashy, and she's going to play a big role moving forward in the Westworld world, uh, one would imagine, even though you'd think after this incident she would be getting completely decommissioned and put on the scrap heap. Like, you know, you'd think after, like, that happened, you'd go, okay, like, maybe, like, we were sort of thinking of retiring her anyway from Westworld. This could be uh, some trouble. But anyway, what... um. 
Well, what about what about the um, Anthony Hopkins stuff? He, I think he had a bit more to do in the second episode than he did in the first. Um, and the, the, there's the guy, our favorite character, the writer of the Westworld storylines, <laughs> uh, was very excited about his, uh, what was it, Red River Odyssey. he came up with the best idea. Uh, he had his big pitch meeting um, saying how, like, amazing it's going to be. And then uh, Anthony Hopkins just shut it down. And Anthony Hopkins has his own idea that it was alluded to. Um, everyone's favorite thing to do um, on their time off, a church. He's making a church for people to go to. Um, uh, better than the Wild River Odyssey. Uh, Tom, what do we think about this uh, Anthony Hopkins and what he's up to? Uh, it's funny. He's, he, he continues to be enigmatic. Uh, you, you know that he has something in mind. But I, I was fascinated by when he walked with the little boy and showed the little boy the church. It was, it's like, okay, this is not what I expected. But it, it really sort of uh, made his character a little more understandable in terms of what his big plans were. And I really, I really liked that. I mean, there, there wasn't a... There was more Hopkins in episode two, but I did, didn't get the kind of clarity yet. But the, the lack of clarity kind of intrigues me. Now, Tom, you're a writer, um, like, and I don't know. I don't think this was said at any point in the like of who this kid is. Like, that's is that Anthony Hopkins as a kid? Like, that's that's what like I picked up from some of that. Like, is that? Was that like, I didn't know if they were trying to tell us that or not. What do you think, Tom, as a writer? I suspected that might be the case. Uh, but I love they, they, they kept it very, very uh, enigmatic. Uh, you, he, this kid could be anything you want it to be. We'll see whether he comes back or not. But it does, if it is Anthony Hopkins as a child, it, 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 his enthusiasm about seeing the church that's being built Kind of brought out a childlike enthusiasm in him, uh, which uh, might in lend credence to the theory that this boy is really him as a young boy. Yeah, they were dressed the same. Um, I think, like, um, I don't know, I can't remember who said it first, but like the kids said, Oh, my dad says this. And Anthony Hopkins is yeah. like, Oh, my dad said that to me too. Um, yep. Yeah. So I, that, that was sort of like what I thought might be the case. Um, I'm sure a million other people thought the same thing. Um, but yeah, so I just want to get your thoughts on that, Tom. And they don't have British accents or uh, uh, like accents, so that's clearly um, no paternity test needed. Um, <laughs> Riley, Riley, what did you think about the Anthony Hopkins stuff? Yeah, in that scene, I was kind of just paying attention more to whether the kid was a human or a robot, which, and then that kind of shifted over the course of the scene as Anthony Hopkins instructed him to leave or whatever it was. So where did you land, Riley? Robot or human? I'd say robot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you guys agree with that? I, I think I think I like, he was um, human, like he just wandered off from his parents who were off doing God knows what in this theme park. Yeah. I think if it is Anthony Hopkins' kid, um, then it is probably a robot, I would guess. Like he's created a sort of like him as a kid, as a robot, maybe. Um but if it's a human, I think it's less likely that it's Anthony Hopkins' kid it, because yeah. um, I think by introducing sort of, I don't know, cloning or I don't know, whatever, uh, Anthony Hopkins has a kid, like, I think that, that like, adds a whole nother thing to it. Yeah. Um, what did you think, Amanda, of the, the, the church and where that could, it could head for Anthony Hopkins? I think Anthony Hopkins might be dead by the end of the season. Whoa, it's a, it's a big prediction, a big Boom. call. What, do, do you think, Amanda, episode 10? Or do you think, like, uh, do you think that with the end of the season, or do you think you could, it could even happen sooner? I think it could happen a little sooner. I mean, they killed Ned Stark episode 9, but I, I just have this sneaking suspicion, the way things are going, that it's, I think a human's going to be killed by a robot. I know I think you made that prediction last week, but now I'm starting to think that it's going to be a, a main character. And so my prediction right now is Anthony Hopkins, but I could go Jeffrey Wright 
because he's starting to become this conscious about putting them down into the cellar or wherever the basement is. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, this is, this would be a fun, like, prediction game. Like, if we were You're all predicting... You weren't expecting me to say that, huh? <laughs> no. You, you were saying, like, Anthony Hopkins is going to... Like, last week you were saying Anthony Hopkins in episode 10 is going to have the, like... I said by episode 10, he's going to have a big episode. Right? Yeah, big episode. Well, yeah, when he dies, that could be a pretty big episode. But, um, so I guess... I guess that doesn't go against each other. Uh, this is a fun prediction game. Let's all predict. If, let's say this season... One of the robots kills one of the humans, and they're both major characters in the show, or at least they have been characters have already been introduced to in the first episodes. Who kills who? So, like, yeah, like what? Like, who would kill who? Let's make these predictions, and then if it happens, one of us will have like bragging rights. <laughs> Amanda, well, you can start. It seems like you've. Oh, O'Reilly, you go if you got one. Well, I don't think that uh, a robot necessarily has to kill somebody for there to be uh, conflict related to death. I think there could also be an accident in the park, and we don't know what the rules are with regard to uh, newcomers. Riley? Riley is uh, uh, malfunctioning. We'll go, to, uh, we'll go to Amanda. Do you have, do you have a thought? Uh, I, so. could, I think Evan Rachel Wood's probably going to be the killer. She just got a gun. She does have a gun in the previews. She's kind was of spending a lot. Was that in the preview? Was that, was... Yeah, so um, I'd say she's probably either going to kill Anthony Hopkins or Jeffrey Wright. One of those two, because she's kind of hanging out in that shed at night with him. So those are kind of my predictions as far as who's going to get killed. Yeah. Tom, do you have a prediction? I, I, I think Amanda's onto something with uh, Evan Rachel Wood, but I'm not quite sure. It's odd when you think of who the victim is going to be because it involves contracts. Yeah. And you wonder <laughs> who, who wants to get off the show. Or, or it's, I, it's conceivable that it says Anthony Hopkins says, I can do it for one year hmm. and then get off. So how many bring, years is he really going to be on television? I mean, when you think about it, it I, I mean, he's not that old, but... Would he really want to do 10 episodes of TV for four or five years? Yeah, and you, kind of, you must wonder about that. And, you know, certainly having him on the show the first year would help to establish its credibility. And then, you know, he can, you know, get blown away and skedaddle off to, uh, to England, do whatever he wants. But, have uh, one big death. yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, story wise, I would think that Jeffrey Wright would probably be the person given um, his hand in everything that is a little more uh, uh, central to the robots. But I can't, you know, I, can, I can't see Jeffrey Wright leading this series. This is a good gig for him. So uh, I'm with you. I think um, uh, Rachel, Evan Rachel Wood, Anthony Hopkins. It is interesting. Yeah, I think that's probably the most likely, actually. So, what a what a boring prediction game. Um, but I think uh, I think I think, uh, I think I think like Riley was talking earlier about how like um, uh, Westworld uh, in his mind has hit some of the Game of Thrones tropes, and I wonder if we will see a sort of shocking major lead character death towards the end of season one that sort of turns the show on its on its head, like. I don't. I don't know if the writers are trying to do a uh, Game of Thrones rehash, and they, they they might avoid doing that to avoid uh, comparisons. I don't know, but uh, that would be interesting to see. I don't yeah. think they're worried about trying to be Game of Thrones. I, I mean, no. I, I mean, as far as killing off a character is concerned, I think that Tom brings up a good point about contracts with Anthony Hopkins. He's probably not going <laughs> to want to do this for too long. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, Riley, uh, you sort of malfunctioned a bit. You've been uh, all, uh, I don't know, reset and things. You're good. <laughs> it's so great for this chat. Uh, I know. He's recommissioned. There's no, yeah, there's no problem on my end. So okay. I don't know. Okay. If, if you guys say I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, we'll get our writers to look into it. So um, what what about um, uh, what about Ed Harris? And here's sort of crazy stuff. He's looking for a maze. Um, mazes are my favorite um 
activity or in activity books. So I'm I'm pretty excited for him to get to this maze. Wait, so that he's... more than word searches? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I I love the maze. <laughs> I love uh, I love as a kid. I that was my favorite thing. I preferred the maze to the word search. Less so, work. Yeah, yeah. So what what um what, what do we think about the the uh, the Ed Harris or the Ed Harris storyline going through the maze? I feel like he's really bad at this game. I mean, he's been coming for 30 years and he's made no progress, it seems. He's spending 40,000 a day. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What it's, um, it's interesting yeah. that, that the, the overseers know that he's out there and potentially screwing things up and they're letting him do it. And I'm, I'm just wondering whether He's playing a deeper game than anyone else uh, with all of his experience coming here. And I don't know what that game is uh, and whether it's simply to reach the maze, okay. But I, I don't know. I, I, the fact that they are so easy on him, given, given the mayhem that he has caused, is fascinating. And I'm really... I really want to want to see more of this, but I just wish we had a little more Ed Harris. It's just a little bit. He comes on, tries to get to the maze, shoot somebody, and that's about it. Give me more Ed. Amanda, he's up to something. That's kind of the reason why I, I just don't see him being in the the line of fire as far as someone being killed. Yeah. But. Yeah. I think eventually we're going to see a lot more of him, but they're trying to, they're only giving us bits and pieces of what he's up to for a very good reason. So I'm just hoping it excuses all of his poor behavior <laughs> <laughs> leading up to it. Uh, it's sort of like the Ed Harris stuff reminds me a bit of the conversation from episode one where they're talking about the corporate people running the thing and the writers sort of going like, sort of like, oh, like, you know, what we want isn't what they want. And the, like, you know, the, 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 bot, the hosts have different, like, they talk about motives and what people's motives are. And I wouldn't be surprised if, Ed, like, if Ed Harris, if like, the the people running the game think he's up to something and he's actually up to something else like and there's going to be come a point where they're going to want to try to remove him from the game and they're finding it hard to or the park and they're finding it hard to get him out or something like you know i feel like they might think oh yes he's paid us extra money to do this extra experience or something and then he just goes rogue at some point if he hasn't already, but I, I think he probably hasn't already because they were looking at uh, him on their iPads and they could sort of see where he was up to. Um, yeah, so that was good. Uh, any other comments on any of uh, any of that? No, I I did want to talk about the guests. Yes, the let's candidate. talk about that. That was, I think, like the sort of story that we haven't touched on yet. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of interesting things here. I mean, it, it's. For one thing, it's maybe kind of inside baseball, but it's kind of delicious to have the real jerk of the two of them uh, played by Ben Barnes, who is Prince Caspian from the Narnia shows, different movies. And, you know, he's the, the symbol of all that might be right and good. And he's just an asshole. In this. And it's kind of fun to see because he really embraces it. When they go into, for example, getting their costumes, William, played by uh, Jimmy Simpson, who's an actor I'm not familiar with, uh, stayed true to character and, and picked out costumes that looked like what a farmer would wear to town, and he took his white hat. And then we see Logan, uh, Ben Barnes' character, come in, and of course he wears a flashy uh, riverboat, black riverboat gambler outfit. And you think, oh, that's exactly what he would pick. Uh, it, was, it, was, it, 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 was, it was kind of fun to see. I don't know where this is going because uh, I did sneak ahead on IMDb and they're going to be on for the, you know, for the rest of the series. So that's not, it's not going to be a quickie uh, in and out. Uh, but the other interesting thing I found with that storyline was that in episode one, we talked about the sexuality that's depicted in the show. And in episode one is basically 
male guests and saloon girls. And that was it in terms of sexuality. Here, when Logan, Ben Barnes' character, comes arrives at Westworld, uh, and the hosts say, you can have anything you want, he takes a woman on one arm and a man on the other. And when he has that sex scene, there, there are two women and one guy having sex with him at the same time. And this is kind of an encouraging development in Westworld to me, that it's they're beginning to explore sexuality other than vanilla and that there are other other you know if you're god if you're a theme park where you're gonna you know have guys dressed up like cowboys i mean you know half the gay bars in the south are based on that <laughs> and so to to acknowledge at least that there are going to be if you're going to deal with uh, sex in, in the park other uh orientations was to me at least an encouragement that the uh, uh, the showrunners know what they're doing. Mm. Um, the the good guy, um, or the good guy, like the sort of nicer guy, the two guests, uh, J- uh, Jimmy Simpson, um, is uh, quite a uh, recurring guest, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, um, that's where I know I'm from. Oh, thank there you, you go. And, and he's the oh, biggest God. jerk in that show imaginable. <laughs> so like, it's like. <laughs> so they've switched characters. Yeah, they've switched characters. Yeah. Oh, what, what, what great actors, Riley. And he's in House of Cards too as a hacker turned yeah. FBI informant. So I find that this is kind of a reversal for him as well. Yeah. I, I, I think um, the thing I like, the, the thing um, that I think would be interesting about this is he, it looks like from the trailers and from the his final scene, uh, where he picks up the can that we've got a new love interest for Evan Rachel Wood on the show. Yeah. So that that I'm intrigued how that goes. How like you know if we get a bit of a love triangle with him, her, and James Marsden, and I'm not sure if that's the direction I want the show to go. So I like I, I I'm a bit reticent, but uh, I'll see how it plays out. I I want her, I want Evan Rachel Wood to do something. You know, have some storyline because this episode it was a lot of looking off in the distance. And that gets tiring after a while. Yeah. Yeah, like, other than Fanny Newton, like, a lot of this episode was filler in my mind. Or setting stuff up, maybe is a better word than filler. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, do we have any final thoughts on Westworld after week two? I'll start with you, Amanda. Uh, someone's going to die. I, I, yeah, that's my thing. It's playing who is it going to be kind of as we go along. And I'll bring a hat next time, so... Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> this is good. Something to look forward to. Yes. Riley, I'll start. Uh, I, I find it interesting how uh, the response to the first couple episodes has been so positive, but the score on Metacritic is only 73, uh, which is, you know, it's okay, but it's it's certainly not what you would expect from how these first two episodes have been received. So when I was reading all the reviews, I was trying to figure out you know, what the difference is. And they have seen four episodes. And I did notice a number of them saying that as the series goes on, it just kind of drags more and more and like more filler or more setup without as much payoff. So I, I wonder how long that's going to last and if it'll um, upset the audience you know, as the series goes on maybe to compare it to something like The Walking Dead or The Killing that started really flashy, got a lot of people talking, and then kind of just fizzled out. Well, to compare it to Game of Thrones, if you look at that, their first four episodes, they had a really good episode two, and then they kind of were setting everything up for a couple. Because they, I think when they submitted this for their Emmy at submissions the first season, it was like episode one and two, then seven, eight, nine, and ten. So they might be... There might be something still coming. There's, there's a way of, of setting things up without it being obvious filler. And hopefully they can uh, have some entertaining, if, if they're doing some work in setting things up uh, story-wise in terms of writing structure, um, I hope they have some uh, divert, diverting entertainment along the way to keep us going. Because I can see people saying, come on, come on, come on. and I. I really don't want that to happen to this show, but I could very easily see that it might. Yeah. 
Oh, well, I'm, I'm excited for episode three, and it will be interesting to see how they go with the pacing and the plotting as it, as it grows. It's definitely a show I'm enjoying watching every week. I think great performances, great production, all sort of stuff like that. But it hasn't become my favorite show um, on TV yet. Like, you know, I still, I still, I think it's still, I think it's early days for Westworld, and we'll see how it grows. Um, there we go, guys. It's great chatting Westworld again. You can join the discussion if you're watching us on uh, Gold Derby at the at the goldderby.com uh, in the forums and um, commenting on articles and all these sorts of things. And make your predictions for the Golden Globes of how you think uh, Westworld's going to go. Yeah, there you go.